All right, this is another exciting video. This is the brand new T-Mobile. This is the G4 AR gateway. So this is their new 5G gateway for their home internet. And the main thing is on the bottom of it, you'll see that there are four antenna ports. So this is the first time their gateway has come from the factory with antenna ports. You don't take anything apart or disassemble anything. And then here is a large uh, 4x4 MIMO antenna. This one is from Waveform. Uh, they also make a smaller one, which is a 2x2. Two two, uh, these are both panel antennas. They also make log periodic directional antennas. Some people will refer to them as Yagi antennas. Uh, those are more the uh, triangle type shape. Um, but I'm going to test these antennas out, and I will test the 2x2 two two just to find out um, how it performs. But I'm going to go ahead and guess that the 4x4 four four is the way to go. And now before we get too far, I have to say this is Nate and this is the Nate Tater channel. And I do encourage all you guys to hit that thumbs up button if you like this content. Also consider subscribing to my channel. That helps this channel grow and me to keep doing this stuff. So let's get right into it. Now this gateway I've covered in detail actually with another video of the setup and everything. So I won't touch on any of that other than to point out these four antenna ports down here. They're labeled antenna 1, 2, 3, and 4. And these are optional to use. The gateway by itself has internal antennas that it defaults to. But in the settings right here on the screen, you can just hit over maybe three or four times and it'll show you an option to pick internal antenna or external. You cannot pick both at the same time. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go test this with just the internal antenna stock. And then I will screw in the uh, 2x2 and a 4x4 and I will see how the performance compares. I also try to do some little testing to figure out um, if it is trying to use inside antennas or not. And that's why I'm going to a little bit of details here on the inside of the board. I talked to Waveform about this uh, to see if they knew anything about this gateway and if they knew of any ideas of how to hook it up. And sure enough, they actually have. They have um, looked at the teardowns, the details of the PCB board and everything for what it has in there. It actually has 12 different antenna ports and eight of those are hooked up um, through the internal ports and these four external ones go to four different ones. So that's the 12 total. But we know it's not a eight by eight inside antenna. So on that board it has a M1 and M2 and a D1 and D2 and those are common. You'll see those in like their other gateways as well. Typically the D stands for diversity and the M stands for main. And so um, it also has four other ones that are labeled HC and then it's either HC1, 2, and O or S. And uh, those ones I'm not exactly sure what they do, although they do look like they are tuned for the higher frequency. So um, like 2.5 gigahertz and higher. So that would be like uh, T-Mobile's 5G ultra capacity. So they might do some logic in there as far as switching those other um, two or four extra ones on or off um, based off what kind of signal it gets. And then if we look at these external antenna ports and where they go on the board, they actually replace um, M1, M2 with a M1E and an M2E. And then there's a HC1 and HC2, both of them with a dash E, which I think the E stands for external. So it's pretty clear to me that those external ones probably directly replace the internal equivalent. But what it means is that the D1 and D2 don't appear to have a external um, comparison. And so they might actually use those diversity antennas even when it's on the external. I'm not sure on that and I don't actually know if I'll be able to fully test that. But um, I guess the point of bringing that up just in case anyone's curious is I would not mess with the board itself and disconnect anything because I think you're going to probably cause more harm than good. If you had eight connections, then maybe you could um, come out ahead, but I don't think you're going to gain anything by tearing it apart and putting these antenna ports directly on the internal ones because I don't think it's going to help you out. All right, and then when we talk about what order we're going to hook them up in, it does matter. These antennas, uh, at least by waveform, they're kind of... Um, on their guide page will be labeled typically like A, B, C, D, or 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. And um, they are cross-polarized, so you have like a plus 45, minus 45, plus 45, minus 45. And then these guys are kind of paired up. So you do want to match them. And the way this one is set up is on the back of this unit, it's um, 1 on the left, 
and then four on the right, so one, two, three, four. And then that matches up as a mirror image on here. So um, when they are kind of back to back, it's one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I'll put a picture of that uh, so it's more clear than me talking. But that's for the four by four. And I'm going to test some other ones just to make sure that that actually works out to be the best uh, from what I uh, get here at the house. And I, I'm about one mile from the tower and I do get N41, N71. I also get um, 5G SA, but I can't use that with this guy um, because it doesn't let me. But if I use something like the Chester Cheetah, you can do band locking and you can do uh, 5G standalone and some other features in there. More carrier aggregation than the de default gateways allow you to have. So I will also actually probably plug the Chester Cheetah up to the exact same antenna at the exact same time and test its speed just so we get a comparison of how this gateway compares to a third party one with the same antenna hookup. And then lastly, we wanna test the two by two. Now, I'm not going to lead you guys on here. I don't think it's gonna be a winner by any means, um, but what I'll have to do there is plug in two of these ports um, to just one pair and the other two are going to be left unplugged. There's no other way uh, to do that really. So that's what I'm gonna test out and we'll see what it does. All right, so I'm up here in my third floor loft space. I have my antenna hooked up. Uh, you know, I have these uh, tapes just so it's easier for me to read. Uh, one, two, three, four across the back side of here. It's a little bit tight, and then obviously with these um, cables being higher quality, it means they're thicker and not as flexible. So the, the gateway really cannot stand upright. I need some 90 degree bends here um, to, um, to come out the back side, but let me just show you how you can go in here and update the, and you see that it, sh it shows us on weak axis right now because it's sideways. When I put it upright, it's good to very good. Um, so this device is um, sensitive to the um, angle that it's at. And we can just go here and switch it from internal, go to external, hit okay. And it's going to check. I tried this without the antenna hooked up and it said failed. So it does check to make sure that it senses something. And then let's see what it shows. So now it's showing very good um, connection. I have not uh, perfectly tuned in the antenna just yet, but I'm expecting very good to excellent up here. So let's see what the metrics say. All right, so this is always very exciting. I did lots of testing on there. I got lots of data of signal metrics, my speed test results, including ping, uh, both unloaded and loaded. And I'm not gonna go through all those in this video because it's going to take a deep dive video just to go through all that. So for this one, I'll just hit the highlights of the stock unit versus the antennas and what I found out about uh, the order of which you hook up those antenna ports. It is very important. So uh, to start with the stock unit, I had trouble getting it to get my uh, good upload speed. And now I had that issue when I first um, did the video on this, where in the first floor I couldn't get over like a couple megabits per second for upload, even though I was getting um, decent like 80 or 100 megabits per second download on the first floor. As soon as I moved up to the third floor um, last week, it actually um, gave me, I forget what it was, but 20 or 30 megabits per second upload, much better improved upload. And um, today I could not get it to do that. All my testing, you know, I still got stuck around a couple megabits per second upload. I know it's something to do with uh, carrier aggregation or what bands um, is kicking on. And the T-Mobile app, even though it has advanced cell metrics, it does not tell you all of the bands that it's connected to because these can connect to more than two bands, more than one LTE and, and um, one 5G. They, they can actually do multiples of LTEs. So that's not shown, so I can't figure out why it did that, but the test is still valid because this was the best I could get without the antenna and then I hooked up the antenna. And uh, it's the same gateway, same software, and it, you can see the big improvement. I'll put a PowerPoint up that uh, shows you how my setup is, but you know, I have the two by two and the four by four side by side in the attic. They are um, behind the sheathing for the roof and they have asphalt uh, shingles outside of them. Um, and obviously they have a little bit of uh, studs maybe um, between them and the tower. So they are going through um, OSB and um, you know, probably some tar paper and some shingles before they get out to the real world. This would get a little bit better if I had them fully outside. But this is the setup that I have decided to put in my house. 
So I'm about one mile away from the tower as the crow flies. I do not have visual or RF line of sight. Uh, there are some trees that block me, but the ground's pretty flat. Um, so I'm really kind of going through the tops of trees to get to the tower. Now, as always, I do uh, comparison tests and I run multiples of them. So I'm just going to show you really most of the time one test result, but it's one that I think is representative of what it was performing like. And I run um, A to B to A type testing where I make sure I go back and check like the stock unit again, or I go back and check a antenna hookup and confirm that the change I saw before is still there. So the stock unit at the start, I uh, got 185 megabits per second down and two and a half up. And then I um, went over and I did the waveform antenna order and I got uh, 265 down and 19 up. The other thing to see there is my ping. So my ping as a stock unit was 31 or 32 milliseconds unloaded. And then with the waveform hooked up, it was around 20 milliseconds unloaded. So that's a big improvement in um, unloaded ping. And then you can also see that the loaded ping did get better for the download, uh, but it really did not improve uh, for the upload. In fact, in this one, it's slightly higher than the stock unit. Other times it was slightly lower. So I give it about a wash for the upload ping in, in this case. But because waveform has not actually had their hands on this gateway, their antenna um, layout is a recommendation based off what they've researched and looked at with this gateway. Uh, so I commend them from actually having a guide up already uh, without having something in their hands. Um, but I had to do the uh, good old engineer trust but verify method, which uh, I'd follow their instructions. But then I also went through and verified it by going um, through different antenna configurations with the four cables and the four ports. And I found a better one. Uh, at least for me. Now, it, um, I've done this on the Chester Gateway and the other gateways that sometimes I actually disagree with what they say is the preferred. And it is because it's going to sometimes matter based off what signals you have at your house. For these, I was, I was basically, at least what the T-Mobile app was telling me, was B66 or B2 as my LTE and N41 was what it was showing for 5G. Now, I also get N71, uh, B4, N25, uh, B12, and some other ones as well here. But that's what it was displaying that I was connected to. Now, if we go to what my recommendation is, um, the ultimate best that I found was actually just swapping um, the second and third. Those are the two middle ports and just flipping them over there. So instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, it's 1, 3, 2, 4. All right, so here's the results for my antenna recommendation hookup. And you can see that my download speed went up from the 265 before to the 291 now. And you can see that, that um, also if you look at the graph there in the like green line, it's pretty stable. In fact, that, that it goes up in kind of flat lines. And so that's always encouraging to see um, that it's not um, changing drastically as it stabilizes. And then the other big change, I got double the upload speed as well. So I went from like that 19 number um, with the um, 1, 2, 3, 4 configuration to over 40. And again, this is um, the time scale. Let's see what it was before. It was uh, 10.08, so it was a half hour difference. Uh, but again, I went back and forth on um, the hookups to make sure I verified the other one did not go um, faster or whatnot. And then looking at the pings again, my unloaded is basically about the same as it was before, but my download loaded ping and even my upload loaded ping did improve as well with this configuration. So um, this was a clear winner for me that it improved both download and upload and my ping. And again, this is over several tests, so it was a no brainer. I did go back and test the stock unit. Uh, again, you can see on the left side, um, where I did get a much improved speed with the stock gateway of uh, 250 megabits per second up from the 185. Um, but the upload was still very much stuck at uh, this um, couple megabits per second and the ping was still poor. So, you know, this shows me that, um, you know, maybe the download did get better, um, maybe because of congestion. I mean, it was only an hour difference, but... You know, 10 o'clock at night, you know, perhaps there was some congestion still there that wasn't as bad at uh, closer to 11 p.m. at night. But 
the improvement of the waveform was still there regardless even if you give uh, the stock gateway the full 250 megabits per second credit and then my testing in my situation that I'm at is actually probably one of the worst for demonstrating the difference between no antenna and antenna and it's because my gateway on the third floor loft is literally at the same level like ground height um, as my antenna is because my antenna is just 15 or 20 feet off to the side um, in a attic space but I'm at the same level uh, so really it for most people you're gonna see a much bigger difference than than this because of that um, that aspect that I'm actually putting the gateway pretty close to where I have the antenna whereas most people will be closer to the ground and for reference you know this on the main floor of my house so instead of being level with the antenna it's down um, a couple floors then I was getting about 80 megabits per second down and like one and a half or two megabits per second upload so that type of difference is more what most people will see if they have a gateway on the first floor and they put an antenna up higher in their attic or outside all right hopefully that helps you um, get an idea of how a antenna will help you with this gateway and help you decide if you want to go after it I will give you a quick teaser for this Chester Cheetah. I put the 4x4 on it at the same time as this one, and I locked it into 5G SA mode. I got 400 megabits per second download. Um, I'll go into more of that in a future video uh, for you to uh, watch and see. If you have any questions for me about uh, this testing or future videos, please put them in the comments below and stay tuned for more.